This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the Nokia E73 mode on T-Mobile in the United States. This looks familiar to you and you're a big phone fanatic. That's probably because you say, hey, that looks a lot like the Nokia E72 that came out in the U.S. as an unlocked phone in February with AT&T's 3G bands. So here we have it now, actually with a different model number. Usually Nokia just does a little appendage at the end, putting a dash 3, for example, for a U.S. band phone. In this case, since T-Mobile ordered it up to offer with contract, they've actually given it a whole new model number unto itself. And the mode at the end just indicates that it has Nokia modes, a feature that we've seen in S60 for a while now, where you can choose, say, a work mode versus a home mode, and you can have different ringtones, different application showing on the home screen, uh, different desktop picture as well. So as you can see, this is a QWERTY smartphone. This runs S60. It's got a very good keyboard. These are fairly large keys by QWERTY bar standards. Let's just compare it to the BlackBerry Bold 9700 here. So you can see the width is a little bit greater on the BlackBerry, but somehow the keys on the Nokia feel larger. These are just regular rounded domed keys, unlike the, the waterfall design that BlackBerry uses here, so you don't get quite as much of an indication of which key you're on if you slipped on and off. But the good thing is that this is kind of a little bit rough, you know, not terribly rough, but enough that your fingers are not slipping and sliding off the way it does in some of those shiny button QWERTY phones. What's special about this really is mostly the hardware. Uh, the, this is S60 again, third edition, feature pack 2. Not much has changed in the world of software for Nokia lately. Not a touch screen, QVGA. But the hardware is really lovely. You've got a lot of metal here. And on the back, it shows fingerprints, unfortunately, as you can see. But they've got a metal removable back here. Very solid plastics. And this is just a very thin phone. It's currently the thinnest QWERTY bar phone on T-Mobile. See, it's a lot thinner than a BlackBerry. But when you look beyond the hardware and at the software, I'm afraid that S60 really it just hasn't evolved much. And the, the BlackBerry, not, not just for the push email experience, which is top-notch if email is your thing, but the whole use of the OS, it, it's, it's very expedient on RIM at this point between their, their optical trackpad that's very easy to use. This has an optical trackpad. Not so easy to use. Better than it, it was on some earlier Nokia phones, but still not quite up there. Doing text entry, for example, sometimes hitting the enter key doesn't work. You have to use a soft key instead. That's that's just not very efficient. Let's look a little bit more at the hardware features. On the back here, we've got 5 megapixel autofocus camera with a LED flash. It takes quite nice pictures. Certainly for a QWERTY bar smartphone, where you're usually taking pictures is secondary consideration at best. Nice metal door back here, and it's also very easy to remove. Today's phones are often just uh, a trial when it comes to taking the door off. You just pop that off, and there's the big 1500 milliamp battery. There's a SIM card drawer that slides out under here. Got your volume controls on the side. Here we've got the micro SD card slot and the USB port right there. And this is the three and a half millimeter stereo jack and your power button. This is a QVGA display. Again, that's also lagging behind. It, it's certainly readable, I mean, because you're not cramming in a very high resolution in a small screen. Say so sometimes Blackberry text when you're trying to read a web page is a bit difficult. And this does have a superior web browser to RIMS. Of course, just about every smartphone has a better browser than RIM at the moment. The usual S60 selection of icons over here. We do have the Avi Store on board. You can download free and paid applications from the Avi Store. Take a quick look at that. This is on T-Mobile's 3G network here in the U.S. right now. The phone does have Wi-Fi as well. Nonetheless, you are required to get a data plan, a smartphone data plan with this phone. You purchase it with a contract. So this is what the Avi Store looks like. You can see a bunch of recommended applications. And you can switch through categories, personalization, audio and video, and the like. You can choose to search, manage your account, and check out channels. It's not exactly going to topple the iPhone store anytime soon for applications, but there's a reasonable amount of software up there. 
keep you entertained. So phone supports visual voicemail and T-Mobile. Media apps include FM radio, Nokia's usual pretty nice music player, real player, and MPEG-4 video playback. Let's take a look at the web browser. This is Nokia's WebKit based web browser. As you can see here, we've got a virtual cursor I'm controlling with the D-pad. And we'll go to our on-site. Download speeds on T-Mobile's network are great. We just recently got upgraded to HSDPA 7.2 megabytes, so no complaints there. And as you can see, the browser is capable. We've even got support for things like our drop-down menus, advanced JavaScript and DHTML work. But it's a QVGA display. You see very little of the web page. And there's the drawback. And then you can trigger overview mode by scrolling quickly. So this is 320 pixels by 240 pixels compared to the BlackBerry Bold 9700, which is 480 by 360. For Office software, we've got Quick Office here. And this can view, edit, and create MS Office files, Word, PowerPoint, Excel files it works with. Got your unit converter, unzip, utility, business card scanner, presentation software, and a file manager and full PIM applications. This guy will sync to Google if you want to sync in the cloud. You'd have to download software if you want to work with Exchange. And of course, you can sync over USB. We've got an email client as well. It's the usual Nokia email client. It's okay, it does do HTML email, it works with Exchange, POP3 and IMAP accounts, and it works with Gmail accounts as well. This is T-Mobile's own IM software. It supports AIM, MSN Messenger, Yahoo, MySpace IM, and Google Talk. And we've got Telenav here for turn-by-turn -turn directions, spoken directions. That's a pay-for service with a monthly subscription fee. It's about $10 a month. And the phone has an excellent GPS. It gets a lock fast and it holds on. This is not like Nokia's from several years ago. You also have Nokia Maps on board, which I found was a head-banging experience. The, the UI is just really not very friendly or intuitive. And the map data, particularly the POI data, for the U.S. is not so great. In Europe, it's, it's supposed to be rock solid and wonderful. But here I had problems with uh, searching for... Chinese restaurant called J.S. Chen's. Chen is a very common Chinese name. And it should have come up with some kind of Chinese restaurant, but instead when I searched for that, it suggested I go to an airport in India some, oh, 7,000 miles away. Hmm. Let's check out the YouTube player. Phone has a 600 megahertz CPU, which is pretty fast. Should be suitable to handle video playback. I will just pick something featured on the front page right here. Video isn't super sharp because it's being fed the mobile version of video, and the frame rate looked like it wasn't quite at 30 FIPS, which is a little bit surprising, but it does get the job done. And these days, every phone's got to have a YouTube player. Now we're going to take a look at the Nokia Music Player. So some sample content that the phone comes with. Do the search by artist. So you can see you've got album art and playback controls right here. Skip to the next track, play, pause, stop. 
got equalizer here and you have shuffle option. So you've got bass boost, classical, jazz, pop, rock. Pretty good music player and it does have an SDHC micro SD card slot so you can put a lot of tunes on here if you want. And it supports Bluetooth stereo in addition to having that 3.5 millimeter jack up here. So that's the Nokia E73 mode for T-Mobile. Available for $70 with a two-year contract after rebates. And I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review.